everyone. It's Molly here at the shop. Um, today is sort of a by request video to showcase our wonderful gift wrapping that we're famous for here at Mildred Hoyt. Um, I've said so many times that, you know, how they say in like running that it's mostly mindset and not physicality. For gift wrapping here, it is 100% supplies and then a very small amount of skill that comes along with it. So fortunately, because we've been doing this for so long, we're extremely well equipped. But what we have set up here is actually very easy to do at home. So we have dowels. The ribbon is always on dowels. Uh, we do have ribbon off dowel, but it's it's very difficult to work with. This makes it super easy just to pull what you need, cut the length, and then not have a mess of stuff in your workspace. So we have many wrap stations set up throughout the shop. Um, this is all kind of a secret one that you might not know about when we get super busy. Uh, we also have some upstairs. So we are kind of our little wrapping elves always working away. Um, and we also have lovely wrapping papers. We get a lot of them from Caspari. They have gorgeous wrapping papers. And that makes a big difference too because it the colors can spike your creativity with the ribbon um, and many different things like that. So today I've already wrapped my box and I'm going to start, so let's get going. So the first thing you wanna decide is how you want your ribbon to fall on the box. I'm gonna do a center bow today because I want it to be really big and joyful. It's sort of like a happy birthday kind of wrap. So I'm gonna wrap around the bottom of the box and then meet at the top, crisscross here and loop it around. I think most of you know how to do that. You always have to have lots of scissors on hand. We have these little aprons and we sometimes put our scissors in them because our um, scissors tend to travel here at the shop. So I'm tying in the center and then I like to trim as I go. Some people trim at the end, but I kind of want to just clean up some of these little edges. So that is what she looks like before we get going. One of, one of the things I consider extremely important in wrapping is to have an anchor. So we use um, some, you know, some ribbons that have metal in them, some, a little bit of wire, so something like this. And I use that, I tie that through the center here. And this is what I'm going to use to tie all of my layers on. I kind of think of my bows as cakes, so I put the largest layer at the bottom and then smaller, and then it just creates this really great dimensional shape. So I'm going to start with the, long, the bottom layer here. I'm going to use a wider width of the same color orange to start. And this is how you make a bow. So first you hold it here. This is your little tail. Create one loop and pinch and then twist. Create another loop, hold it all together and twist again. I like three loops on each side to start and kind of, you know, it's just smaller than the width of the box. So now I have three and three. And I'm gonna trim and I'm gonna lay it flat on the box like this. So you have three laying flat, three laying flat and use that metal anchor I was talking about to tie it. So it's gonna look something like this. That's your bottom layer. I'll probably do some trimming at the end. So next I'm gonna work with a different color because we have some really nice colors in this wrapping paper. I'm gonna go with some turquoise. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna use one width smaller than I did before because it's sort of like stacking layers. This is just how I do it. It's certainly not set in stone rule. I think what you'll find is that everyone has their own style. I'm still gonna do three and three loops like I did before with that same twisting action and trimming and I'm going to lay her flat as well so you see that we're starting to like build and there's some volume happening and you can play with it you know you can kind of make it how you want so next I am going to add a little bit of a filler this is certainly not mandatory but it's fun and we have a lot of fun fillers one of which is this like mesh dot and I'm gonna pull out this cute green color so I'm gonna cut a piece about a little, you know, a little bit longer than the width of the bow. This is my piece. And I'm going to again lay it on top and tie it in the center. 
so it kind of fans out on either side and just creates some nice texture and dimension. And I'm a, I'm a trimmer as I goer, so I'm gonna trim the edges because I like it to look neat and tidy. And you know, lots of people would say, well, aren't you done yet? Like, definitely not at Mildred Hoyt. So I think this package needs some signature Mildred Hoyt pink. I'm again, I think this time I'm just going to do two loops on either side, but it's the same motion. It's the same pinching and twisting the entire time. But again, see, she's just a two and two. Tie her on top. It's starting to look super joyful. And then I, I sometimes like to tie the bottom color back into the whole equation. So I think I am actually going to grab a little bit of narrow orange and just do one loop on either side here. And like that. And when you tie her at the bottom, she kind of sticks up, so, which is what I like to happen. It's like the bottom layers are flat and this one is just sort of like up in the air. And then you just take any, you know, pen or pencil or anything like that. Just like a simple number two pencil works. We're going to curl around the wired edges. So this is also why it's nice to use wire because it, it's a, you're able to finish it off to look really nice. Now, of course, we could add one of our signature roses, which may be a video for another day. And then I just like to sort of neaten her up so that it looks in play and fluff. Don't be afraid of the bow. And then, ta-da. So that is our Mildred White bow. You can see she's got quite a bit of depth. She's got height and guaranteed to make someone smile. So I hope you enjoyed this video, found it instructional and enjoy your day. Bye.